In this course, we will describe the various types of hot runner molding systems. We will also demonstrate proper molding techniques for hot runner operation. In addition, we will discuss troubleshooting techniques, important safety procedures, and corrective maintenance procedures for the hot runner system. Hot runner molding is a type of injection molding process that produces only finished parts, no runners. The hot runner distributes melted plastic from the machine nozzle directly into the mold cavity. Unlike cold runner systems whose parts and runners are cooled and ejected each cycle, in a hot runner only the parts are cooled and ejected each cycle. Since only the parts are cooled and ejected, there is no wasted plastic from the runner. In some cases, molds are built as a hot to cold combination with a hot runner feeding a small cold runner system. Let's first review how a cold runner mold works. Cold runner molds use a machined path to deliver the molten plastic through the runner system to the gates and then into the mold cavity. Cold runner molds can be designed from a single cavity up to 32 or even more cavities. The cold runner system is often used because of its lower initial mold cost, relatively simpler design, rapid color change capability, and the option of changing gate and runner sizes to balance the plastic flow into the cavities. Cold runners extend the cooling time required for a given part, therefore extending cycle time. Cold runners are typically either discarded as waste, as they are in medical molding applications, or ground up and reprocessed at an additional expense to the molder. In addition, not all molding applications allow reprocessed material or regrind to be reused. The hot runner system is a more efficient injection molding process than the cold runner method. The elimination of the cold runner means less material handling and less material waste. Not having to regrind runners results in a savings of energy, labor, and equipment costs. Also, the reduction in total shot volume often allows a smaller injection molding machine to be used. And, hot runner molding can reduce the cycle time, since the runner is not cooled each cycle. All of these factors can represent a considerable cost savings to the molder. In addition, there is more freedom for the ideal gate placement, and the option to select a valve gate if gate appearance is important. Also, Multi-gated parts are more easily molded with a hot runner system. Injection pressures are often less, reducing material shear and molded in stress, resulting in better part quality. The hot runner system is more complex than conventional cold runner molding and the initial mold cost is typically higher. However, High volume parts and applications using costly engineered resins are often more economically molded using hot runner systems. Let's examine the parts of a typical hot runner system and see how it works. We'll start with the sprue bushing, located here. The sprue bushing acts as an extension of the injection molding machine nozzle. It provides a flow path for the resin from the machine nozzle into the manifold. The manifold plate contains the manifold, which carries the plastic to the nozzles and into the cavities. Heaters are embedded into the manifold to keep the plastic melt at the required processing temperature. The manifold distributes the resin to each nozzle. A well-designed manifold should provide balanced flow to each nozzle drop. 
From the manifold, the resin enters the nozzle housing. The nozzle housing is heated by electrical heaters, used to control the plastic melt temperature. From the nozzle housing, the melt enters the nozzle tip, which directs the melt through the gate into the cavity. The part is then cooled and ejected from the mold, and the cycle repeats. Let's take a closer look at the hot runner manifold. The manifold can be quite complex depending on the number of cavities within a mold. Designs with up to 128 cavity hot runner systems are available. These systems have multiple manifolds with several melt channel levels in each one. The manifold should be designed with optimal pressure drop for the plastic in mind. The total pressure required to fill and pack the cavity is the sum of the hot runner pressure drop and the cavity pressure drop. Ideally, these combined should not exceed 85% of the pressure available from the machine. Less pressure drop is generally better and can be achieved with larger melt channels. A compromise has to be reached between acceptable hot runner pressure drop without having excessive melt residence times in the hot runner. Short shots are an indication of excessive pressure drop in the hot runner. The molding machine may not be capable of generating enough plastic pressure to push the melt through the hot runner and fill the cavities or the required injection pressures may be so high that they damage or cause leakage in the hot runner system. Manifolds are typically designed to withstand internal plastic pressures up to 30,000 psi. In a well-designed manifold, the flow distance will be the same to all gates to ensure that the melt's pressure and shear history is the same at all gates. This is considered a naturally balanced layout. Sealing surfaces on the manifold and nozzles must be perfectly smooth and aligned to prevent material leakage and hang-ups. In addition, the melt channels in the manifold should be designed with sufficient radii so that material does not hang up in corners, which could lead to plastic degradation or cause color change problems. The melt channels must also be polished as smooth as possible to reduce pressure drop and the possibility of material hanging up. Hot runner systems are designed with specific melt channel sizes in the manifold and nozzles based on the specific molding application. For example, if the pressure losses through the system are a concern, larger melt channels should be selected to reduce the pressure loss. When using larger melt channels to deliver the melt, the volume of plastic in the system obviously increases. If the volume of the material in the hot runner system is significantly greater than the volume needed to fill the cavity, this can result in poor color change performance and degradation of heat-sensitive resins, if that's a concern. While melt channel sizing is generally determined by your hot runner supplier, you should communicate your intended material type, machine size, and color change expectations during the design process. A consistent delivery of heat to the manifold's flow channel is necessary to maintain a uniform melt temperature. There are three basic designs to keep the plastic material molten in the hot runner system. These include the insulated runner, the internally heated runner, and the externally heated runner. The insulated hot runner was one of the first systems to produce parts without sprues and runners attached. This basic hot runner design 
uses a very large melt channel to carry the melt through the hot runner system and out the gate into the cavity. When this channel is filled with plastic, the material in the center stays hot due to the insulating properties of the frozen layer of plastic that has solidified against the cold outer walls. The flow of plastic through the center provides enough heat to keep the runner flowing. This type of system is quite economical, but is best suited for fast cycling molds using a general purpose plastic material. When an insulated hot runner is cooled, either intentionally or by a machine fault, the plates must be separated and the solid runner removed before the mold can be restarted. Another way to keep the melt at the processing temperature is to use an internally heated runner system. In this design, an internal heating device can be used to supply heat directly to the plastic in the flow channels. Here, a pipe or tube is inserted through the melt channels of the manifold. Within this pipe is a heating rod or a cartridge. The plastic material is actually heated from the inside out. The plastic on the outside and the furthest away from the rod forms a cold layer against the bore wall, which will insulate the melt from the relatively cold metal. The entire system design is not very complex and therefore less expensive to manufacture. The preventive and corrective maintenance costs are lower as well. However, the internally heated hot runner system is a relatively large system, requiring bigger melt channel diameters to accommodate the heating rod. In addition, within the system there are numerous intersections that can cause the material to hang up and degrade. A color changeover is often difficult and time-consuming as the manifold must be dismantled and cleaned of plastic. Internally heated systems should not be used to run temperature-sensitive materials. Plastic resins that are heat-sensitive can easily hang up and burn in the intersections causing streaks and black specks in the molded parts. Highly crystalline materials will not tolerate the temperature variation that exists between the internal heater and the outer layer of the hot runner, resulting in degradation and material burning. The more common method of maintaining the melt temperature within a hot runner system is through the use of external heaters that are mounted in or on the manifold metal. This design heats up the manifold, which in turn heats the plastic and the melt channels. With this type of heating, the melt channels are typically small, round, and material flow is unobstructed. Also, the heat that is supplied to the plastic melt in the hot runner system is more uniform than with the internally heated design. More specifically, the manifold is heated with heating cartridges or free-forming heater rods, also known as cal rods. The heaters are embedded into the manifold steel. This minimizes temperature differences throughout the manifold. The manifold heating system is typically designed to allow for a fast heat up during the startup mode. There shouldn't be any air gaps or voids between the heater cartridge or rod and the manifold. This would reduce the heater manifold contact area and affect heating efficiency. Externally heated systems are often referred to as open pipeline systems because there are no obstructions in the melt channel. This method offers the least resistance to flow and therefore the lowest pressure drop. The unobstructed material flow causes less material hang-up and therefore less material degradation and allows for a much faster color or material changeover. With external heat systems, 
the molder has excellent control over the hot runner melt temperature, and the external heaters have a relatively longer life compared to the internally heated systems. Precise positioning of the various heaters into the hot runner manifold is required to ensure an even distribution of heat to the plastic material. Uneven heat distribution can lead to cold spots, which increase plastic viscosity, leading to uneven filling in the mold. And of course, more heating circuits require more wiring circuits. Over time, this increases the maintenance requirements and may increase the possibility of circuit failure. To contain the manifold heat, cooling of the manifold plate, the manifold backing plate, and the clamp plates of the hot runner system is often required. Plate cooling is necessary to maintain a uniform mold plate temperature and to match the thermal expansion of the mold plates. In addition, high temperature applications sometimes require clamp plate cooling. Cooling also serves to maintain each nozzle drop in the same thermal state. This ensures that each cavity has identical temperatures, thereby maintaining uniform part quality. Plate cooling also thermally isolates the hot runner from the cavity plate to avoid affecting the part cooling and cycle time. Plate cooling is a critical part of the hot runner system that is used to regulate cycle time and overall part quality in a given injection molding process. Water is circulated through cooling circuits that are routed in both the backing and manifold plates of all hot runner systems. During the design stage, careful consideration is given to the cooling circuit layout, number of channels and lengths, and the diameters of the channels to provide a uniformly cool mold. Cooling channels that are too long, have too small of a diameter, or an insufficient amount of channels can cause hot spots in the plates, resulting in extended part cooling and eventually longer cycle times. Insulator plates are used to minimize the heat loss from the mold plates to the machine platen. Modern hot runner systems design their cooling line circuits to efficiently maintain the backing plate temperatures. In a well-designed hot runner system, an insulating plate is not always necessary, but is still recommended, especially if the mold temperatures are high above 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 to 121 degrees Celsius. In this lesson, we discuss the fundamentals of the hot runner system design and operation, including how melt flows through the hot runner system, typical manifold designs, and manifold heating and cooling methods.